Welcome everyone to our latest Expresso demo, dive into dynamic DMARC for an email security revolution. I'm Rachel Gray, Marketing Director at Redshift, and I'm really delighted to be joined today by my colleagues, John Klassen, sales engineer in the US, and Jorge Montiel, sales engineer for EMEA. If you have any questions regarding any of the topics we outlined today or the subject matter, please put them in the chat or the Q&A window and we'll be really delighted to answer them at the end. And without further ado, I'll be handing over to my colleague, John Klassen, to start the demo. Thanks, John. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, thank you. Great, great to be here. I'm going to uh, share my screen and... What I wanted to um, talk about here is the first thing I wanted to do is just thank you. These are uh, a series of uh, uh, demos where we um, hope you can grab a cup of coffee or tea and uh, understand a bit more about the um, environment that uh, uh, where we provide solutions and some of the challenges and things that come up on here. So we'll get pretty uh, down into the uh, uh, the offering here or the tech technology that goes with it. So in this particular case, I wanted to talk to you about something that comes up on a lot of the calls um, I have uh, get to have with uh, customers, managing domains. So there are a couple of ways you can do this. Clearly, DNS has been around for a very long time, and, um, and you can do this manually. So I'm going to compare and contrast what, um, what the benefits are of, of that. So the first thing is, <laughs> I have to laugh at this. Uh, one company, a security company I worked at, it was it was always the firewall that was the problem. And here I just found so many um, comments and things as I was researching for the presentation that um, pointed to, to DNS. Uh, people thought the problem was somewhere else, uh, but it wasn't. <laughs> it came right down to it. So it's something that always seems to... Um, uh, you know, it's a bit bit brittle. Um, there's some surprises there. And however you want to share this, uh, it's, uh, it was kind of a fun reminder for me uh, when I'm doing stuff manually on this. So one of the challenges that we see is that the DNS organization is separate often from the email team. So when we're working on things like uh, a DMARC, um, uh, Google and Yahoo just came out with a, a standard for bulk sending that requires a number of um, checks on the DNS, uh, some upgrades and things to be compliant with their requirements. It, it, it's got to go to somebody else, and they're not they're not on the email team, and sometimes they don't understand it. So you can set um, submit a ticket, and then you're going to wait, right? Because you're not the only thing that they're worried about. Once it is changed. I've seen it take 24 hours to for those changes to propagate. And then the uh, uh, ongoing work with DMARC, SPF, and DKIM, you're constantly going back to the same DNS team. It's not that they're not uh, smart, hardworking people. It's that it's another group, and you don't control your own destiny on there. So you spend a, a, an inordinate amount of time um, trying to get changes done that you know uh, what they are, but you just don't have permission to it. And as we said, even when the problem doesn't look like DNS, it is. It's um, DNS has been around for so long, and yet there are things that are poorly documented and misunderstood. Here's an example that I wanted to use for the talk today. This is a domain that I've got uh, set up. Uh, it's in a, a lab environment, so I can, you know, uh, do uh, what we call dog fooding, right? Eat your own cooking on here. And you can see that there's a number of different records that need to be set up in, in DNS. And they can be um, uh, delegations from to the name service. It could be text records and so on. And when you're in a text editor doing this, it can be um, a little, um, you know, hey, I have to raise my hand. I've, I've made uh, typos, uh, not just misunderstanding things, but just flat out made a typo and uh, kind of shot my own toe off on this. So lots of stuff that's that's going on here. Here's an example that we can we can see 
there's a little bit of a console in the um, uh, DNS uh, system that I'm using, uh, but not a whole lot. It's basically pick a record type. Uh, there, there are a number of different ones. Put in the host. Uh, this one, uh, uh, I was flabbergasted <laughs> that I needed to put in the uh, at sign for the host here. And um, you, you learn on this and then the different um, the values here. And particularly the DKIM value can be a very long um, text string that represents the key. So these, these are going on uh, here. We see it. So now I'm actually going to go in and show you what this looks like. Again, there are many, many DNS uh, systems to choose from. You may not have control over this or access to it. But if you do, you'll see some of the values come up here. And it's yet another interface to learn. So um, in this particular case, I'm looking at johnclausen.com. Uh, and when I go into the advanced DNS, you'll see some of these values that, that came up here that you can, can look at. And when I want to add a new record, again, there's, uh, there's a lot John, of stuff. From. Yes. We're looking at your presentation right now. Thank you. Thank you on that. See, I'm 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 human. I, I make errors on here. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so what I'm looking at here is um, the the console for the uh, DNS that I have, and um, I've gone down to uh, the domain that um, I've uh, that they're uh, servicing for me, and when I see the different values here, I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you're trying to make different uh, add new records in here or changes on these. So you can see there's a number of different records to choose from. Uh, like I, I mentioned, some are NS, uh, the name server, some are text and, and uh, C names and so on that are on here. And once you pick one, then again, it's just letting you put in different values here. There's no syntax checking or no, um, no errors or things that are that are looking on there. So if I do want to go out and, and get a check on this, there are some uh, free tools that are available here. And um, this is a second domain that I have in my environment. And let me check over to this uh, slide, yeah. And um, what I've got here is you can see all of these different uh, values in here. So when I go to validate the, um, the SPF record for here, it comes along here. And boy, you have to have sharp eyes on this to see what's going on. So in this particular case, I'm concerned about the SPF lookups. So there's a limit of 10 DNS lookups um, according to the SPF standard. And here it's telling me that I've got six. So that sounds good, but you know, what what do I know about that? <laughs> which Which ones are out there? Which ones am I seeing? So again, I start to get down into this um, kind of quagmire here with the different different values that are on here. And this is an example where you could um, do uh, flattening. So you could change your, um, your domains, your DNS entries into IP addresses so you avoid the lookup. But then you're in trouble, at least I feel I'd be in trouble if I had to maintain these and understand uh, what's, what's going on on here. So, if I summarize these, it's, you know, manual configuration using uh, text editing. Uh, you saw there were no syntax checks and more. They're going to uh, not be for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's going to be brittle. Uh, it's complex. Um, it's it's going to be difficult to troubleshoot when you're trying to see that's on there. It might be a valid record, but it doesn't have the right, right uh, values for your environment. And of course, if you work in different environments, you're going to have different DNS consoles. And, you know, I always like to just show a little bit more of the picture here. So this was um, another uh, checker that I worked with. So the first one was this public domain one. And then I went into one of ours. Um, and um, here goes the, um, the different uh, services I'm using for SPF. So these are the services that I want to uh, be able to use my domain. So you can tell them uh, it's okay for your domain to be used on all these. 
of how do you figure out if you're over the limit or not? You know, what, what's going on here and stuff on that. So with that, I'm gonna um, hand it over to, um, to Jorge to share another approach that you could use to, um, uh, to set up the DNS uh, because that's, that's where everything starts with email and, um, uh, and so on there. So Jorge. Thank you, John. Um, so certainly, yes. I mean, especially when we're talking about trying to, when you start to reach those limits of 10 lookups and try to flatten manually, or even if you implement a script, um, at the end of the day, it's never going to be as automated and error, um, and it's, it might be error prone. So from that perspective, um, I will show you another view that uh, probably will, it's, it, it will already look um, fairly uh, more friendly than uh, than what John just shared with us, and I have another domain over here. This is this is a, a test domain that we have in the company from one of our colleagues, um, and effectively, what you can see here is the same kind of features that you would need to configure on a DNS, but done on a on a nice um, user interface rather than having to text uh, to to put in and to input text in, in the DNS and without any, any error handling whatsoever. So if we focus on, on this bit over here in the includes, you can see that I have um, Outlook, Tengrid, and Firebase Mail. Um, and in that perspective, all of them are actually summing um, 10 lookups. As long as you're at 10 lookups, you're going to be fine. Now, if I were to have these on a flat text on my record, I would need to check those uh, records on a regular basis like John showed me, because um, if tomorrow's hang grid goes over to three and, and they, they can do that very easily because if they're, they need to do some uh, low balancing or whatever it is, um, then um, I'm already at 11. So in some cases, when you're over the 10, then authentication for SPF is gonna fail. Now, the way it looks like from our side is, if I display this where it says smart includes and found in the DNS, that's what it's in the, in the actual DNS. I have a single include, and then that single include has all of the IP addresses uh, in, in, the, in that single include. Those IP addresses as well will be optimized so that it has the least amount of um, pages or lookups um, so that it never goes over the 10 limits. And at the same time, we're going to put at the top of the list uh, the IP addresses that are sending most of your emails. So imagine if even within Outlook, there is a set of IP addresses that most of the cases are sending your emails. We're going to put those IP addresses there and the rest of the backup IP ranges, we're going to put in uh, if, if, there, if we've not seen it much, then we're going to probably put it at the, at the bottom of the list. So let's say 80% of the cases, anybody checking your uh, SPF DNS record, then we'll find the IP addresses in the first or two pages. Now, how can we then, you know, I showed you I have 10, 10 is already okay, but how many lookups do I actually have on this one? Um, if you're technical um, uh, enough, not, not too technical, but if you know where to how to do an NS lookup or a dig if you're on a Mac, you, you, you'll be able to see that yourselves or the tool that uh, John was already showing. But also in the right here in the in the UI, we can show it when we click on details here on the right. Um, we see how it's 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 actually being presented. And it says here that I have only three of a maximum of 10 DNS lookup. And again, the reason for that is because automatically, not only we're flattening all of the IP addresses, but we are optimizing them to use the uh, least amount of DNS lookups. And again, always under the 10 lookup. Our biggest customer with, uh, in terms of DNS lookups for SPF has uh, around 125 of them. And we keep it always at 10 or less. So if we go back to what we what, what it is effectively the dynamic services, I could add a new one if I like. Uh, I could add as many, like I said, we have customers with 100, uh, over a hundred of them. But I know that now, let's say my 
uh, marketing or any other team called me up and said, I need now to authorize a new service, then this one is Sava Cloud. I click on Add Include, and that's it. And automatically at that, at that very moment, if I were doing this on, the, on a flat text, include by include on my DNS, I'd be at uh, 17, as you can see. However, if I go back to the details where we were looking at before, and I can refresh this just to make sure I have the latest um, for, uh, copy, as you can see, it went from three to five, because I, but I added seven. So I added two in real terms, but the include that I added in the back end is uh, has seven more. So that is the level of optimization that we do so that we only we always stay at, at 10 or less. We always keep it at 10 or less. Going back to dynamic services, again, like I said, I have it there. It's, it's, it's there. I can delete it straight away right now, and then it will go down to the three automatically. There's error handling as well. If, let's say tomorrow, uh, any of these include, uh, they update their, their IP addresses, and one of those ranges don't, doesn't work, then the tool automatically will go back to the last known good configuration and apply it. So we always catch the last good uh, known configuration for those cases as well. If there's anything to be done, if nothing solves the issue, you'll get an error message over here and you can even get notifications to say that there's something going on and, and maybe you need to contact your third party or, or any other issue. Now, this is the most critical case when it comes to better managing your DNS records when it relates to uh, the DMARC implementation, but it doesn't, doesn't actually stop that. You can also make a lot of, uh, you can also make issues when creating a DMARC record. Um, one issue that we, that we see a lot is that customers creating two policies for DMARC, uh, one without and one with the, with the uh, let's say the on-DMARC configuration, and in whichever case, um, that invalidates the policy and hence cannot, uh, DMARC authentication cannot be done. We also handle that, that kind of error. So those errors will be, um, by, by doing that, we can also check that here at the, at the service level in which we will say, okay, there's something wrong with the DMARC policy. And in the details, you can see more details. Um, now on the DMARC level, the biggest advantage is trying to avoid manual errors when it comes to, let's say, when you're ready to go from reject to, uh, sorry, from none to quarantine or to reject, then you do it as you could see, you do it uh, directly here, and then you click Save the Changes, and then we update that for you on the DNS. And the way to do that in this case, it would be with an NS um, uh, delegation of the, of the DMARC policy. Now, it's not mandatory, of course. These are just added values that, that we have in the in the in the tool to to avoid uh, um, as much as possible manual errors at the DNS level. For the team, is very similar. The same kind of case. Um, you can add your own. Uh, you can add your selectors here. In this case, I have it only for Microsoft, and. Um, um, and the second one is, is not working, but um, the really, like I said, this is a testing account. The one that really counts is um, uh, this one here at the top. Very similarly, you create an NS record on your environment, and with that NS record, then you can add as many selectors here as you like. Um, another next step that is that is very important um, is an added value to DMARC. It's not necessary to have a, a DMARC policy of reject is what is called MTASTS, which is to enforce your TLS uh, connectivity and then to receive reports. That's why we also have a RUA address for MTA um, reports to receive reports as to how your TLS connections have been uh, happened. Similarly, all of these configuration would need to live if, without a solution like on DMARC, we need to live on your DNS. And but in this case, we can change all of those configurations straight from the UI. Um, this is my MX record. This is the MTA um, address. And like I said as well, here's where we have the, um, 
um, the records that need to be added to the um, DNS in order for us to manage that for our customers and receive and especially receive the report. So that uh, we can we can have a look at how those reports are, um, how my TLS connection, how secure it uh, really is my TLS connection. And then uh, obviously, this is the focus of today's uh, presentation, but all of this is just to show, as you probably know, and, and if you don't, we, we invite you to see uh, our previous recordings when, where we focus a little bit more on, on um, what DMARC is and, and how to secure it. But uh, in short, for DMARC to pass authentication, not only you have to have a valid SPF and DKIM configurations, but the domains in which those are set up have to be the same as the domain that is sending the email, uh, the email itself. So what is called the SNTP from or the friendly from that the user see. That's what is called alignment. And when that happens, then you're able to see reports and you're able to uh, check how everything is, is going on. And if you're ready to move from none to quarantine or to reject. So this stage, this is what we what we have for you to uh, to show. Uh, John um, or uh, Rachel, I don't know if you've seen uh, questions coming in at this stage. Let me uh, share the screen here too. So um, can, can you see the free assessment yep. screen? Yeah. So just just first, I wanted to uh, thank you for investing your time to learn more about uh, Redshift and in this case about the difference between manual and dynamic um, DNS services. So we think we've provided a lot of value there, but it's great for you to be able to get in and actually see what happens where you don't have to change your DNS record every time you uh, need to make an update to um, DMARC and the associated uh, services that are there. So we um, offer a free assessment of, of your um, uh, your data. Um, we can go through that and you can, can sign up here. So I'll leave this up and we can go through then to um, th through to the, uh, the questions um, on here. So let me uh, actually let me stop that for a minute here. And so for questions, we have a few. So um, Jorge, I can uh, read those off to you. Um, so the first question is, what is needed to connect your solution to my company's DNS? How does that work? Yes, that's a good question. Um, because it, it might seem like we are we need to connect to your DNS or have some kind of authentication or account level to to access your DNS. Um, in reality, there there are two major cases for SPF. Um, we manage everything at the include level, so within a single include. So what we used what we called the smart include, in fact, is is probably a good idea to reshare. Um, what I'm talking about, just to make it extra clear. So this include that we have here, we call it the smart include. Um, so if you become our customer, um, my secure email will be uh, uh, in, that it says right here that that will be replaced by your own domain. And then that will be identified uniquely to each of your domains. So if you have more than one, uh, every domain in subdomain will need their own SPF record. That is a general uh, requirement. In our case, what we do is we create a single, we identify you with a single include, and then we just populate the IP addresses of these includes into what's there, into this um, in, uh, smart include. Now, for DMARC, DKIM, and MTA STS, it is a, an NS delegation. In the case of DMARC, it can be a C name. But in the case of DKIN and NTA, uh, NTA SDS, it has to be an NS uh, delegation. 
And, um, and again, it's a delegation at the DNS level, but that allows us to um, populate changes to, those, to that delegation so that we don't need to have access to your DNS at all. Great, so one change to DNS and then a customer, you know, for each of those types would never have to change that again, presumably, because they're right. doing all the, the changes with us. Yeah. Yeah, we get a right. lot. You know, people are, yeah, they're concerned about us taking over the DNS. But as you point out, it's just a record that points to us. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And also, there is a bigger, uh, our customers have seen a lot of return of the of the investment in, in the software, because probably they have um, a change request that involves several people having to either authorize or to actually make the changes. So, so that's many hours on very trivial changes. Let me let me retract on that. Very trivial technically changes, but with a big impact on if, if they get it wrong. So because of that, then they spend some some uh, people's hours into making those changes. So when they realize that they, they're going to eliminate a lot of that manual errors, not only they save in future errors, but at the same time, they save in um, people's time as well. Yeah, that's a, it's a great point that uh, the impact of that small change, right, is <laughs> could be, uh, be be huge. And then I think the other comment, um, Jorge, have you seen people like removing things from their SPF record or are they only adding to it? What's your any experience with that? Sorry, what do you mean, uh, John? Yeah, so I mean, are people, do you see people adding services or are they mostly replacing uh, services in their SPF record? Oh, no, they, they add <laughs> They add more, yeah. As, as um, obviously, a lot of people, a lot of organizations have been uh, relying on digital media and digital channels for a long time. Uh, but after COVID, then even those that weren't relying on it so much are uh, had to and keep on relying on digital channels. So that means that your your ways of communicating via email with your with your end customers, then it's it it grows, and and you need more third party services to be authorized for that. Yeah, thank you. So there's another question. I think you partially answered it. Um, it are there in fact NS record types? Um, are these uh, entries we're seeing NS record types? I've only ever seen C name types. Yes. Yeah, so so it can be NS and most. Uh, so for DKIM and and for uh, for DKIN and MTISTS, it has to be an NS record. And for DMARC, uh, there's an option for CNAME as well. OK. Great. I don't see any other uh, questions on here. Let me cool. just uh, share that, that screen again that um, so people know about the assessment. Mm -hmm. So again, we. Um, we really appreciate your your time uh, that you've invested today on this, and you know, please take us up on the offer to get a free um, uh, cyber risk assessment. We'd be happy to do that and go over the results with you. Any other uh, thoughts, Jorge? Before um, I think we can wrap it up. Yes, just one last thought is around the how available our pro uh, platform is. So, our platform was developed by our founders before we even had products on it. So for them, uh, if you don't know the history of our founders, they were they were pretty much the technical brains uh, that created uh, Shazam. And one of them in particular, our CEO, uh, Rahul Power, was the one that actually created the Shazam app itself that kicked off what we know about Shazam today and that ended up being acquired by Apple. And um, for them is is, it's important that the platform is highly available. So it, our availability for the last 10 months, to give you an example, has been on the, on the dynamic services level has been 100%. So we keep in, uh, as a microservice, we keep dynamic services as a separate running service independent from the rest of the platform. You understand how important it is for our customers to, to be able to authenticate emails. Great. Well, uh, again, please um, uh, take advantage of the uh, the free assessment, and uh, we thank you for for joining today. 
Uh, we'll end the uh, uh, espresso demo now and look forward to uh, the next one. We have these on a regular basis, so keep your eyes open. We'll um, uh, be bringing some interesting topics to you uh, every month on this. Thank you. Thank you, John, and thank you, everyone, please. Thank you for coming.